So you finally decided you're going to build that shed or that garage or that house that you've always wanted, but you're not quite sure how to build a rafter for the roof structure. Well, I'm going to show you an easy way to do it using a framing square and the good old technique of just laying them out. First of all, we'll take a look at the framing square here. Sometimes they measure in tenths, I believe, and sixteenths, and they have these charts that you can use to figure out your rafter length. Well, I have no idea how to even use those. I've been pretty well self-taught on how to lay out a common rafter. So all we're going to do is use the two outside measurements on this and we're gonna step off a rafter. So the garage that I'm building is 18 feet deep, it's 20 feet wide. 20 feet is the width, which means the gable is going to come this way. So my rafters have to span that 20 feet. It's a 412 pitch, so four inches of rise for 12 inches of run on a 20 foot wide garage is approximately 40 inches from the top plate to about the center of the ridge would be 40 inches. On a 20 foot wide garage, your rafter has to figure to be 10 feet. Because you have a rafter on either side, you're only going through half that measurement. So what we do is we step off on the rafter 412 times 10 times, and then we figure out our bird's mouth. Here you can see the 412 is what we're gonna cut for the ridge call that the ridge cut. Now these are all things that I have learned them to be called and what just in practice with working with other people we've called them. So it'd be a 412 ridge cut. You step off all the way down to your 10 feet. Your 10 feet would be right here on the outside of the bird's mouth. This is where the top plate will be of your wall. That's what hooks that. I call this the seat cut. And here is the stand. This would be the measurement from the bird's mouth up at the outside of the wall. It doesn't make too much of a difference usually. It will on this one because my fascia is actually going to be right on the wall because I can't put an overhang on it due to the fact that there is a telephone pole right here. So I can't have an overhang. This would be my fascia cut, which is a plum cut, which is the exact parallel to the ridge cut. So we have a ridge cut, seat cut, fascia cut, and then the perpendicular to the seat cut makes the bird's mouth. Now you have to account for the fact that there is a ridge here. So on a 20 foot wide garage, we have a 10 foot rafter but we have to take off three quarters of an inch for half the ridge. But this also hooks onto the OSB that is on the outside of the wall. So we have to add a half an inch. So it's 10 feet minus three quarters of an inch plus a half an inch. So it's 10 feet minus one quarter of an inch will be the total measurement for the rafter. And now I'll show you how to lay one out. So I like to work right to left when I'm laying out a rafter. I'm right-handed, it just makes all the cuts easier when the bird's mouth and the tail and everything is on the left side, it's easier for me to cut right-handed. I suppose if you were left-handed, you might wanna do it the other way. So this is a basic 412 pitch, which means four inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. So when you step off a rafter with a framing square, you are going to be measuring both the rise and the run at the same time. So what you would do is you go with four and you go with 12. Those are gonna be our two outside measurements that we're going to use. I have my rafter crowned up. You always put the crown up on a rafter or a floor joist or a ceiling joist because it makes any deflection come down and it would straighten the board out as opposed to making it dip down more. So I'm going to lay out 
from the top of my rafter, I'm going to put the four on the outside. And then I'm going to put the 12 right on the outside of the board. So I have a four and I have my 12. I mark that. Now I can extend that. Now what I can do is twice 412 is 824. So I can go 824. and mark that. Now I have my ridge cut. Now from here, we're going to step off all along the bottom. So I put the 12 right on that line. I put the 4 on the end of the the edge of the board also. Now remember our total measurement is going to be one quarter inch less than 10. So I'm going to back this off a quarter. So my 12 is still on the edge of the board. My 4 is on the edge of the board. But the line comes through at 11 and 3 quarter. So I mark right here. There's one foot. Now I put the 12 right there. I put the 4 right there, 12, 4, and I mark. There's 2 feet. There's 24 inches. Now I'll show you a quicker way to do it. I'm going to switch to 24, 8, which is equivalent to a 412. So I put the 24 on the edge on my line. I put the 8 on the edge and I mark. Now I'm at 48 inches. Slide down. 24. 8. And mark. That puts me at 72 inches. Eight and mark is ninety six inches. That puts me at eight feet of run, twenty four, eight. I'm going to mark this one all the way across the board. Here's a hundred and twenty inches. Minus our quarter that we already accounted for down there. So this would be the outside of the bird's mouth that will hook the outside of the wall. Now I have to cut my seat cut, which will sit on the plate. Anytime you're stepping off, anything that measures along the 12 is a horizontal cut. Anything that measures along the four is the vertical cut. So having the square opposite, we're going to go with a four and we put the 12 there. Now we want about five inches is what we're going to sit on with a seat cut because we have four inches and we need enough of it in the bird's mouth to catch the OSB on the outside of the wall. So we're outside of the board 12, outside of the board 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 inches of seat cut, and we make our mark. This will be cut, this will be cut, and this is the bird's mouth. Cut that out, that's what's going to sit on the wall. Now. For a six inch overhang, we have an inch and a half subfascia, so that gives us a four and a half inch overhang. This line represents the outside of the wall, so if we put the 12 
on the line on the outside of the board, the four on the outside of the board. Then we can slide the whole thing down. We're at four on the outside of the board. 12. We have four and a half that's intersecting the line. We mark this. We can extend this. Four and a half inches beyond the wall, plus an inch and a half in subfascia would give us a six inch overhang. But this garage isn't going to have them, so I'm going to cut this here. It's going to be a bobbed tail. That's a whole different thing. We'll get into that in another, another time. Now that we have everything laid out, I've double checked it. And now I'm ready to make my cuts at the ridge and at the seat cut. And I will cut the overhang on it to show you that, although this one is not getting the overhang, I can cut that off afterwards. Ridge cut. Seat cut where my plate will sit. There's my fascia cut. Now if you can imagine that this is the outside of my wall, this is my top plate. The rafter would sit just like that. Now I'm sure there's lots of other more in-depth videos out there that I welcome you to check out. I'm sure maybe Larry Hahn has one. He was a legend. Norm Abrams, you know, all those guys that really paved the way on how-to videos. Go check them out if you can find them. But this was just my crash course. I wanted to show you how to do that. If you liked it and you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, which should be right here. And uh, here is a video for how to set these rafters on a garage by yourself. And uh, stick around, watch some of the other videos, and I will hope to see you again soon.